And thank you guys. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you know, my name is Jay Perez, and today I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Stephanie Fry, and she's in the real estate industry. So, you know, when I started the podcast, I, my main idea is to give people the capability and the opportunity to learn from different industries, learn from different businesses, and find different ways to make money. I hate to read people on social media saying, like, I lost my job. What do I do now? There is a thousand things that you can do, and to prove it today, I have here Stephanie Fry, who is a. Well, are you real, are you in, you're <laughs> I, in re real estate industry? But what are you exactly? Um, I'm a sales professional. Like to be honest, I'm just I'm I think I'm amazing at sales. So, what what not better than real estate, right? So I actually work for the builder. I'm the salesperson or new home counselor at the for the builders. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So how do how how. Do, can somebody is is it hard to get started in the real estate industry? Um, really getting your foot in the door. Just be super ambitious, have a lot of enthusiasm like myself, and just show them that you don't quit. You're a hustler. You're a go getter. Be persistent and follow up for, for those um, applications. And they like seeing that because they know okay, if this person's like that, just trying to get the job, this is how they're going to be like when they're trying to get the sale. So that's how I was. And be memorable. People love that. Be interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Show them that you're not like everybody else and why why and how you should stand out. But aside from the real estate, like from selling and, and getting your real estate license and all of things, like is there any other thing that somebody can do like to make money off of real estate? I've seen some people that what they do is they find homes mm -hmm. and they they – they become like a broker in some sort? They could, totally. Um, so you first get your real estate license, you make X amount of sales, um, and you have to get that many in order to apply for your brokerage license. So you can't just go straight into becoming a brokerage. So you actually have to sell X amount of homes and then become a broker. Okay, but what, what about if like, let's say that I, I know my neighbor, I know my neighbor mm -hmm. is selling his house and I help him find, like, do I need a real estate license for that? Or, or can I just no, talk to her? No, he can probably like just pay you like, like as a finder's fee, I mean, just be nice um, as a common courtesy. But does he have to pay you? No, um, because you're not licensed agent, right? Okay. So you can, I guess, find a real estate friend and that friend can help you out. Does hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So and then talking about sales and getting in the in the sales mindset and all of that. So do you, mm -hmm. do you have any particular stories, anything that you can recall uh, or any, I any so particular? Many. I mean, good, bad, ugly. Um, maybe something that jumpstart my day. I love Jeff Shore. I listen to Jeff Shore on the daily. He's kind of like Gary V, but for new home sales professionals like mm -hmm. myself. Um, he talks about objections, maybe things that's going on in the market, um, us just being better versions of ourselves, and and how we can overcome those things that we're tackling on the daily. So he's he's just a great person overall. I like listening to him. Mm -hmm. And and then like that helps you get in the sales mindset or is it? It does, yeah. So I usually listen to him almost every day on the way to work because I'm like, oh, I haven't thought about that. Oh, I didn't approach it that way, or maybe I'm dealing with a not so not so ambitious client, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try this tactic today. So every day is always something different, and that's what I like about it because things are changing constantly. And it makes things interesting for me. So and then, when, well, something that I've noticed with when for real estate agents and people in that industry is like they all have this super nice personality. It's <laughs> like they're always happy and like hi, ready, eager to help you and all of that. Do you think there is like a certain kind of personality that you have to have to be in the industry, or there is like anybody can do it or I think anyone can totally do it so if you haven't taken the disc profile yet I would definitely recommend it um, the disc profile you can find it at anthonyrobbins.com right mm -hmm. you know Anthony Robbins yeah, Tony yeah, Robbins. Tony Robbins, yeah yeah so Tony Robbins he has a disc profile ABCD you guys can tell I'm more likely an A where I would just like to go 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 I'm just very mm -hmm. driven and like to see things as a bigger picture maybe you're type C or D where you're very analytical and you love looking at the numbers and you're very detail oriented cool those are usually gonna be like more engineers lawyer's mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can complement a little bit of both or all four um, quadrants, then that's usually like an overall what most people would want for their salespeople, where you can relate and help 
every person, every dynamic, every personality, mm. right? So let's say, for example, I have a husband, wife. The wife is typically going to be, um, she's looking at the house and the kitchen and everything else. And then the, the husband would just cares about the numbers. So I have to compliment both people, which is true, right? Usually couples attract. So typically the husband and wife are kind of opposites, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I was like, great. Well, let's take a look at numbers because if the numbers don't make sense, then everything else doesn't make sense, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, cool. So I typically like going over the numbers first mm-hmm. and they're like, and they have a better like flow, like, okay, like we already know this is what we're working with. So do you have to be a certain personality? No, but it's great if you can compliment all. Mm. Mm-hmm. But truly just be yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 so cool. And then and then when it, when it comes to selling, like, do you try to focus more on the on the like on the on the wife, or do you go with both? Or that's a really good question. Uh-huh. Um, I think overall. I would say yes, the wife, because I feel like most of the times the wives are the decision makers, mm-hmm. right? And they're the one take, taking care of the house. And the husband's like, you know, if it's as long as it's below this much, I'm cool. Like, this is our price point. You can't go over, mm-hmm. right? That's their, that's like your spending limit. Hey, 300 is our spending limit. Go find a house. So it would be like, okay, that's our limit. And I need a man cave and I need a three car garage. As long as it has those two things, I'm good, you know? Mm-hmm. Or as long as, um, I have some backyard and a covered backdoor patio so I can grill, then that's all I need. Go find a house. Typically, it's like that. Sometimes they could both be about just as equal. So I do kind of fill them out. But mm. most of the time, it's I feel, sorry, guys, that it's usually the women's. And they love the kitchens and the closet space and making sure things can accommodate the kids. Or maybe they have like a mother-in-law suite. Then I make sure I can find something for them. Then I've seen that lately there's a lot of like people investing in real estate and like tra- trying to do fixer uppers mm-hmm. and trying to do all of this because you know television tends to mark trends and and whenever the fixer upper uh, show came out and the extreme makeover and all of those shows it makes it seem so easy do you do you have any experience with that on that area do you think it's a good idea is it a bad idea um, I think it's always a great idea to invest in real estate because you can't make more of it you can't make more land. Um, It's all about the property investment and the shortage of supply in Houston, right? And Houston seems to be always shortage of supply. And us as builders, I do get more of an insight of how much can we build in the city of Houston. Mm -hmm. Um, So whether you're investing and you want to look into doing Airbnb, right? Maybe you're not ready to make that first step. Is that actually profitable? It's actually really nice. I was an Airbnb host for a couple of years. So this was way back when there was like the Houston Super Bowl year. Mm -hmm. I made like two grand in in a week. Like really? just yeah, it was, and that was back in the day. It was a few years ago, but I mean, you can you can actually do really well. And there's so many people traveling to Houston for various reasons. I know, like mm. the pandemic and everything else is is somewhat you, lining up, but there's so much great opportunity. But do you have to be in a prime location, like near downtown no, or midtown or no. something like that? My my place, I had a one bedroom apartment, by the way, a one bedroom apartment out in like the Klein area. I did fairly well. People like the accessibility of 249. It's close to Exxon. Mm-hmm. It's close to the Med Center. Um, they just, they like me. So as long as you're communicative, responsive, and you're just a professional overall, you will do fine. Yeah, That's I won't cool. even mind helping you out starting out. And you have a manual, you have a booklet. People love things that are user-friendly. Make it user-friendly. Try to think of all the questions you would ask if you were a tenant, if you were, like, looking to rent that place. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a native Houstonian, I just list the things, hey, these are the top restaurants I would go if I were you. And just think of all the fun facts you would give to that person. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And that's something you can do, like, if you own a home, or even if you don't, like, you can be mm-hmm. renting a place mm-hmm. and just say like i have an extra room right or or yeah you can rent out a room you can even there's another thing out there where you can even lease out a garage space so you can make money from your garage by just by letting someone let's say sit their classic car in your garage and mm-hmm. you can charge them x amount or maybe they want to just store some equipment like boxes they don't want to lease or rent out a storage unit but if you let them store your stuff in your garage they'll pay you I mean, that's passive income. So I'm all about passive and residential income. 
all of, I'm all about it. I'm all about the cash flow. And you don't have to be there like the, the whole thing. You don't thing. have to like, be you there. You just probably take some good photos mm. and then upload it and, and that's it. You just mm. got to be on your phone res uh, responding to people. Exactly. That's so cool. And I didn't know like you, you can be that profitable. I thought it was like making $300 a month or something like that. I mean, it's like anything else. When you're starting a business, you have your good days or bad days or good months and bad months. And um, Houston fluctuates throughout the year. So maybe it's like rodeo season. Maybe it's the Renaissance Festival coming in or maybe the Houston Rockets or like that instance I had the the Super Bowl here in Houston mm -hmm. so there's just a lot more supply and demand um, there was a Cirque du Soleil family that stayed in my apartment for three months you know so mm. it's super cool and that's, really? mm -hmm, and that's where it's so all cool. about yeah they they stayed there I mean a family of four um, the parents stayed in the bedroom and I had a pull-out couch and the kids stayed in the living room it worked and out. That was your property. You weren't living. That there, was it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because I had moved in. Um, I had moved in with Pat, uh -huh. and I was like, and I was a single mom. I was like, well, I don't want to cancel my lease because then I'm, I'm effed, right? Like, yeah, exactly. I don't want to put myself. Goes out of the way, yeah, I don't want to be in a sticky situation where if something goes south between me and my boyfriend at the time, then I have nowhere to go. So I subleased my apartment, um, left all my furniture there. I didn't have to cancel it, didn't have to move all my stuff. I left everything there, tested out the waters, and it did super great. Mm. So I really enjoyed it. And it was also my backup plan. Okay, if something, if, if me and him didn't work out, I can always move back to my apartment. That's a great idea, like, mm -hmm. for for so any, any girl in that situation. Mm -hmm. So I really started on accident. And then you charge, like, what, $100 a night or, like, um, I think the first month I was happy to break even right initially because I'm like I have my own place everything's stored so I think the first six weeks I broke even and then it really took off because if you're like me I love reviews so I'm all about accumulating reviews and then once people see oh there's she's had 50 five-star bookings I'm a book with her but let's say it's $20 more than that other place they're like but she has she's more credible mm. so at first it was all, i was all about building reviews building my reputation and then i started to make money so it takes a bit maybe some people can start raking up money like right at first and probably you do you know and i was still learning at the time i had no one coaching me or mentoring me um i was in real estate so i just had an idea of customer service sales um how to market the property and just putting it out there so and that was that that's awesome that was Thanks. awesome uh, we can cut here if you need to do something or you want to go sit down or something like whatever it's fine okay it's just like we're in the live so we, we we can we can just cut i, I noticed all right all right perfect okay all righty so going back three two one and so what are some vendors that a real estate usually deals with because I know actually like at some point I was working for, for you and working for your companies and mm -hmm. uh, doing some video and photography for that. And that's actually how we, no, we, no, we didn't met that way. We actually met uh, taking photos of you as a model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, was, he was super amazing. I was like, Jay, I got to hire you and got to do stuff for me. And that, that was that. Yeah, 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 that's great. That's great. Um, but yeah, so like I know real estate photography and videography is like a great industry. You can make mm -hmm. hell of money doing that. For me, it's boring, to be honest. It's just like nothing, something I cannot do like more than once a month um, just because it's <laughs> homes and th that's it. It's not exciting. Yeah, I like to talk to people. I like to be mm -hmm. with people and things like that. It's not, it's not ex exciting. But I know there, I have friends making uh, six figures and, and cool. just by doing that. Um, so, but what are other, but again, I always talk about photography because that's my skill, right? That's a skill yeah. I developed. And I know it's easy for me to say like, oh, you just do what, wedding photography or do uh, real estate photography, but I, I've had the equipment and the skill. But what are some other things that people can do as a service that they can provide to, to real estate? What, 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 um, I guess the main team I always work with is going to be our, our vendors, is the title company, appraisers, loan officers, um, inspectors, home inspectors. Um, of course, we have my construction manager, but that's me on the builder side um, as a realtor. So the big difference between like what I do and the realtors do is realtors work for the brokerage, which they're, self, they're subcontractors or self-contractors at 1099 and I'm a W-2. So as a realtor, they're going to have their, their loan officers, preferred, preferred loan officers, or preferred title companies, um, their preferred home inspectors, maybe even some warranty company reps. 
Mm-hmm. Um, because when they represent to sell your home, that home needs to have its own warranty for the first year, mm-hmm. typically, traditionally. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even a credit repair specialist. If someone, mm-hmm. you know, you have a client, they have an okay credit score, then you refer them to a credit specialist to give them a game plan. They're mm-hmm. like a credit coach, right? Mm-hmm. And I like that. I love having coaches because it gives you a game plan. Mm. Mm-hmm. So those are, and then of course you have a photographer, right? Maybe you you have um, you're putting a home on the market. Then you need to have in your phone book, okay, a plumber, an electrician, someone that does power washing to make the listing look really well, or look really good, look presentable. Maybe um, an interior designer because we want to stage the home to look like a model home. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to make it not look like. Like, yes, it's a family lives in it, but it can be nicer, you know, and we want to get the biggest bang for your buck. And that's what the interior designer is for. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then so if somebody, let's say, because I know pressure washing right now, it's booming. I don't know why everybody wants to start a pressure washing business. I guess it's it's easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go buy a $300 pressure washer and now you have a pressure washing business. Yeah, yeah. But like, how would you recommend somebody to approach like a company saying like hey i have this business would you is it a phone call is it a, is it an email better them knocking on the door what what would you think is the best um i think you just you hit the nail on the head just all of the above and be persistent so call text email even shoot them a video mm-hmm. do like a one minute video that's what i did for my interviews because i understand time is money like do you think a manager has a time to look over you probably not they may just put you to the side but they're like oh my gosh this person sent me a video let me listen to it you know let me watch this person because you're not just another name on a business card so i actually made a video to my interviewers that why reasons why they should hire me right Mm. so i was like hey my name is stephanie fry amazing what i do and let me tell you why you should hire me i did x y and z you know fun some fun facts about me and that was that and then it was in their hands now so And I'm sure to them, they're like, wow, if this girl is like this on her presentation, can you imagine what she does for our sales and marketing team? So that's that. And it also shows that you're a business professional. Yeah. Just be persistent. You'll eventually get your foot in the door. That's that's great. That's a great thing. Another great thing about you, Stephanie, is that you somehow find time because you're not only selling homes and making people's life uh, better Aww. by owning you're also uh working a lot in the gym yeah you're you're a bodybuilder mm-hmm. you actually had a competition did you ever f- uh, went to the competition i didn't i was doing a bodybuilding show early this year and then i decided to get some surgery so i did my mm. surgery over in colombia and then now i actually just got done with my first week of powerlifting so or my powerlifting program so i'm shooting for my first powerlifting meet which is the john griffin over in october now mm. so i'm stoked that's so uh, well i want to talk about like first of all the fitness side And then mm-hmm. I want to talk about Colombia. Okay, <laughs> that's, okay. let's do that's it. That's also, I know, I know everybody's interested about that. So when it comes to the fitness part, I mean, how do you manage? Because everybody wants to go to the gym. Everybody knows they have to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And they might go one day, <laughs> but then it hurts <laughs> the next morning. And you're like, hell no, I'm not going back. Yeah. How do you manage to push yourself and, and actually break through that process? Because it's you, you have to... Uh, I want like I don't know for how long you've been exercising or mm-hmm. going to the gym and all of this, mm-hmm. but like I don't know if you remember the first time that you went. Like, what well, actually took you? You know what? Uh, my chiropractor asked me this yesterday because he's like, "Hey, how are you feeling?" I'm like, "I'm sore," and he's like, "Why?" I was like, "Well, this week was my first, you know, week of doing my um, my program, my powerlifting program," and he's like, "Well, when did you start getting into this? Like, when did you initially start lifting weights?" I was like, "Well, I." I actually got serious, got a trainer, and got to a program maybe about four years ago. Um, I mean, I had always been lifting weights where I would just go into a boot camp or go to a strength and conditioning class, but then I would eat like shit for the rest of the week, mm. right? And I didn't care. I'm like, you know, I worked out, and my mentality was I eat to work out, and I work out to eat, you know, and hashtag balance, right? Mm. So I didn't know anything about proper nutrition, um, love having my breakfast in the morning, just all the things, and when you should feel your body, and just really being in tone with myself, I wasn't actually in tone with myself and listening to my body and my gut until maybe about four years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. Back in 2018. Yeah, 2018 was when I did my first bodybuilding show. And I just put a post on my Instagram showing like my body from 2018 to 
my body 10 weeks out at 2021 it's like night and day difference did you see that post i did it was like i didn't see like you you were looking super great in both yeah thank (laughs) you but i look like a totally different person to the left i was like this small girl i was super lean and this donut bikini and then you see myself grow like my shoulders my lats and my glutes so Mm. much gains right we all care about those gains and how do we how do we build and how do we keep and maintain so yeah, I guess cool. I guess I'm looking at fitness from the, I I looked at your photos from the different perspectives. Usually, uh, you have people that are naturally skinny that are trying to build muscle, and then you have people that are uh, I don't want to say naturally fat, but like they they they're have, bigger. Yeah, yeah, they're bigger, and they're trying to slim down. Mm-hmm. And and some things that I've been learning recently is that actually building muscle helps you lose fat. Mm-hmm. And like going totally. pulling with some some people I I remember in the. Uh, at some point, sometimes people used to tell me like, "No, you first need to lose weight and then do weight training, because otherwise, like the 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 fat will." I don't know. It makes you no sense now. You can do both. You can do both. You can yeah. lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. Mm. totally so you asked me a question like how do i do both i just love working out first thing in the morning i feel amazing throughout the day have you done that right where you work out pretty early in the morning maybe 6 7 a.m but see like i've tried that but every time i try to work out in the morning i'm too tired for the rest of the day really yeah and then i i usually when i was in 20 2018 i was training for a whole year and i used to train at night Mm -hmm. because right after that i would just get out of the gym and and then go take a shower and fall asleep okay like I was, that's cool uh, uh depleting myself i, I mm-hmm. want to say but i don't know yeah and i tell everyone do what works for you and um a really great question you had that hit on the little head was i just found that i love and i kept doing it i kept sticking to it so i told some like a lot of my friends like crossfit works for me or like bodybuilding work for me and i was telling them just find what you love to do whether it's um doing those bike cycling classes or doing those rock climbing classes, you know, where you just go in or maybe you like Spanga or Zumba or what have you just go ahead and just find something that you love and then just keep doing it and keep adding on it. And so I that's think, my biggest I advice. I think a, cl- a class is way better than just like getting a gym subscription, right? I like classes. Classes work for me. Right? Yeah. I love group activities because I'm like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. You know, type of mentality. And that's how I just be able to push myself and it pushes me out of my comfort zone. And you have somebody there teaching yeah. you, training you. Because like I, for many many times i've get i gotten like a gym subscription and then you get there and you have no idea what to do and also you're like oh my gosh gym like that class starts in 30 minutes i gotta get out of the house you know so you, there's also a time like i gotta go and or if you tell yourself okay i'm gonna go to class monday wednesday friday at this time and i'm gonna shoot for tuesday and thursdays at this time hmm. so you're already making a commitment and appointment with yourself an appointment with that class and then actually plan for success and then putting in your calendar you make it a point to go right? and have you noticed have you noticed a correlation between like your work life and your fitness life like that is helping you like feeling good with so yourself? much so much i mean just overall if to me if i don't look good when you when you look good you feel good right and it gives me that boost of confidence i'm here to smash the day um i just i i have great energy throughout the day and that shows while i'm in that sales office um and i know that when i'm doing this and i'm also showing you a really great example for both me and my daughter you know um and i know i can tell i think everyone can tell the difference when you kind of put yourself down when you're not feeling fitting your clothes like you normally do mm. so in my head, when I look good, I feel good, and I listen to my body about it. And who doesn't love gains? Like, who doesn't love to see progression? I love seeing, knowing that I am striding not only mentally, but also physically as well. And then financially, if you're, like, analyzing yourself on a weekly basis, and you're checking those checkboxes off, those are that's definitely one of my checkboxes. But what happens, it's a good what happens when, the, when you don't see any changes? Like, do you do, do, you do another way to to give you like to treat yourself or to to pretty much say like okay maybe i i don't have any gains how do you keep yourself from continuing searching for that or is it just because now you know that they are there they will yeah. get there well i have always had many coaches i would just ask my coach like what where what am i doing wrong like why am i not seeing progress and i get a lot of my friends ask me hey stephanie coach me train me i'm like i'm just an athlete like i'm just an athlete i just listen to my coaches go get a coach i'm not a professional Mm -hmm. right because i don't feel comfortable giving advice because i'm not a licensed or certified personal trainer Mm -hmm. you know i tell people i just follow the game plan and um 
and that's it. I was like, I highly recommend Jess or I highly recommend Andrew or whomever is my coach and trainer at the time. Mm -hmm. Be like, go check them out. They're really good. So then you said you went to Colombia. Mm-hmm. And I saw you were super open about like everything that you did there. Yeah, and, like, how I've been the- meaning to post that experience on YouTube, but I just haven't done it yet because I have, there's very few and far in between where people travel to other countries for their surgeries, especially in Colombia. And I couldn't find anything over jaw implants. I'm like, am I the only girl that's done jaw implants? I couldn't find anything anywhere. People were like, what is that? What is a jaw implant? So You got a jaw implant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, so so they, put, they put like fake jaws back here like i can't i can't feel this but it's there and it's supposed to help like the sharper jaw lines mm. um a lot of women when they do fillers and contouring their face they contour their nose their cheekbones and their jaw lines mm. so that's what's supposed to help me out with that and because since i work out so much at the gym or that and i have a fast metabolism mm-hmm. um when i do fillers they're just gone and fillers they're not they're not cheap you know they're not They're like a solid grand, you Mm. know, and then they're gone in like three months. Mm. I didn't want to do that. Mm. Um, So instead, I got my jaw implants, which was about a grand. Um, I had my nose done and they took some cartilage from behind my ear and placed it inside my nose Mm -hmm. um, to help me shape that nose. And he also broke my chin. I call it like a chin augmentation where he broke my chin. They moved it forward just a little bit. Because, um, you know, not that you're not yeah. like your face specialist or anything, yeah. but when you're looking at other people's faces, they may feel that they're flat face. Like mm-hmm. there's no structure or definition to their face. Mm-hmm. So this just gives my face more of a characteristic feature, if you will. Mm. Yeah. So and then how was the experience of like traveling to a different country to... It was it was great. Like, did I, you do somebody with you? No, I went all by myself. I know that's yeah, so weird. Yeah, I mean, so, usually you want to like have somebody there giving you soup just in case I'm anything like, goes you know out. How, I was like, how bad can it be? I'm like, you go, you do your appointment, and then I sit at the Hilton Hotel, and then I do my rest and recovery at a hotel. Like, how bad can it be? You know, mm. it's not like I'm touring or exploring the country by myself. And is it significantly cheaper? Mm-hmm. Like a rhinoplasty here, the median cost is about 10 grand and over there was like 2,500. So it's a fourth of the price. Totally. Um, I had my nose, my jaws, my chin done um, for about five grand. What? Yeah. That would have been at least 20 grand over here in the U.S. You know, my wife is about to. So as I'm to take care of that. <laughs> and actually, my flight coming back to Houston, half of the plane, it's women like they just had their yes, <laughs> like they had they just had their boobs done, so they're just walking super slow. People just had, <laughs> you know, maybe they had their nose done like me, and they have a cast on it. I mean, half of the plane was women, you know, getting that mommy makeover, and they're sitting on donuts or lots of um, Brazilian butt lifts, oh. for example. Lots of women, they're, so they're sitting on donuts on the plane waiting to come home. So I stayed in Columbia for two whole weeks. Great experience, amazing people. Would I do it again? Yes. I'm actually going back again in December. I'm seeing Dr. Montoya for my veneers, my luminaires. So I'm super excited about that. I will Those be going are super back. expensive mm-hmm. in here. It right? is super, teeth are expensive. I don't know if you guys have checked out teeth here in Houston. Yeah. But um, so teeth here, probably solid 15, 20 grand, but he's doing my top and bottoms for about eight grand. Yeah, mm-hmm. in Columbia. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, I get ten teeth on top. How do you go about that? How do you how do you how, how so do you find I a doctor? I first found this out maybe three years ago. One of my friends told me she owns a med spa here in the Woodlands, and I trust her judgment. You know, you I trust the professionals, right? She's already done her research. This is what she does for a living. I told her, okay. So I actually messaged um, my surgeon over in Colombia, and he he actually quoted me the same price as he did. He honored the same price three years ago. I was mm. like, done. Boom. Let's do it. And that was that. That was Dr. Soto. So after meeting Dr. Soto, I met um, Dr. Montoya, which was in the same building. And I, was, I did a consultation with him. I was like, okay, I'm coming back. One, as a follow-up checkup with Dr. Soto, mm-hmm. but also be getting my teeth done in December. Mm. So I'm stoked. So, and do they speak English, anything like that? Um, do you have any issues with that? I know you're, you're, you've been learning Spanish a lot. Yes, Jay. <laughs> like, <laughs> believe it or not, you guys, I practice some, my Spanish with Jay here yeah. and there. So, <laughs> I think I'm okay, right? You know, I can get myself around. Um, 
And I think the same thing. I may speak a little bit of Spanish. They may speak a little bit English. So we just kind of work it out. Mm. Um, but for the most part, no. There's no English signs. There's no English books. There's no. It just all varies. Um, I was in Cali, so the hotel receptionist, like out of the four or five, maybe one spoke some English. Mm. Or maybe at the you know the breakfast area, the breakfast buffet area, we would actually. A lot, everybody knows how to use Google Translate. So a lot of times I use Google Translate with everyone. So mm. it became really beneficial. I used it at least a dozen times a day. Mm. Yeah, it works out. So then, so all the, all the people that are scared, it's just like, go ahead and do it. How, how do, can they start their search mm. on the doctor? Um, or? You know what? So there's actually like a, a nurse where she's she's like a coordinator in Cali. And you tell her what you want and she will coordinate you with the right type of surgeons that you want. Let's say you want a mommy makeover. And she'd be like, okay, great. Well, I highly recommend these three doctors and these three doctors. Send me your pictures. I'll go and coordinate for you. So she'll translate and speak to the doctors on your behalf. She'll pick you up from the airport. She'll take you back to the airport. She does your post-op. So she's like a Cali Colombian nurse that helps coordinate you with the surgeons. Do you so have her cool. contact information? Can yeah, people... her name's Karen. She's called Karen the Beauty Plug over in Cali. So Karen that's what the Yeah, plug. so that's what she really is. That's what she refers herself to to. Yeah. So she's pretty amazing. So that's really how I met Dr. Soto and kind of went from there. Yeah, she's amazing cuz like me, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's a good part or a bad part, but she really helped me a lot. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. So then going finally to, to the last part, and that's also part that is I find it very inspiring, is that you've been doing this. You became a mom like a very young age, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So well, how old were you when you became a mom? I was pregnant 21. I had her 22. Oh. Yeah. Is that, is so and then how were, were you all, like were you as a, as a single mom were you with your couple or what what, what was the, the whole yeah, process? Yeah, so when I was pregnant, uh, me and her dad had split, and then when I had her, you know, I was automatically a single mom, and I'm very fortunate of the support of her dad's side of the family because that's their only grandbaby, that's their princessita, that's their everything, and um, I'm super blessed and super fortunate for that, and. Um, like, yes, it is very tough. And that's actually one of the reasons why I went to real estate. So once I had my daughter, I didn't go back to school. Instead, I went to real estate school, got my license within the year. And then I've just been doing, you know, I'm doing okay since, right? I don't want to say I'm doing amazing. But if I didn't have my daughter, right, children change our lives. She totally changed my life for the better. And I think it's because of that transition really made me who I am today because I had to go through that struggle and that grind. Um, I was working like a Monday through Friday sales job at a pharmaceutical company. And on the weekends, I would work as a server. I was a server at Sullivan Steakhouse when it was still around. Sullivan's and Del Frisco's is the same company. Mm -hmm. So I was a server on the weekends and I would Uber in my Civic until three o'clock in the morning, sometimes four, just depending because the clubs and such close at two. Mm -hmm. And then I get people home around 2.45, 3 o'clock. And then I don't actually go back home to Jersey Village until like 3, 3.30, depending. Yeah, it's pretty wild. But so how do you transfer this hustle mentality to your kids? Like, do you, is there anything in particular that you do to, to teach uh, her about like, because I'm sure that she she by example like you're leading I hope her so. like you're leading her by yeah. example. Is there anything else that you do besides that? Any anything that uh, I don't know to teach her, train her, to prepare her for like a. I think I'm doing. A, I think I'm doing a good job. Um, I can see she's really great with coordinating and communicating already at such a young age of seven, and. I believe that it takes a village to raise a child, and it's probably why I'm so lenient with her going to El Salvador for the summer every year with her grandma, or she's staying at her dad's, and she's staying with my parents, and she's staying with me. She's staying with various people. I think it helps set her up for success because she learns something different from all of us. Um, but... I do believe that she needs a kick in the ass every once in a while from life because if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have grown. So I know some way, somehow, do I want to protect her? Yes. But I know she's going to have to learn the hard way. Everybody does in order for you to grow. And I can't do that for her. And she's so smart. Well, thank you. Can you can tell she's so smart. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, that is a great thing actually you pointed out um i have noticed like as she's grown their teachers like she's very mature she's very smart she's so funny um she's super spontaneous like people love her i'm like good cool you know so i'm glad yeah and she's just she's just amazing i'm not just saying that just because she's my daughter but 
just from what other people are telling me, I'm like, okay, great. Let's just keep this going. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, thank you, Stephanie, for coming with thank us today. Thank you for having thank me, you. Jane. Thank you for, for sharing all of these amazing stories with you. And thank you for the smoothie. Thank you. Oh, so you're so welcome. <laughs> you guys, if you guys want to follow me, my Instagram handle is Stephanie Lynn Fry. And you can find my YouTube is just Stephanie Fry. I'll be posting my galley trips pretty soon. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, and then if people can want to follow you, please go ahead and follow her. And you're going to see all this amazing because she's a model. She's <laughs> always inspiring oh, us you. with the fitness, making me feel guilty for all the crap that I'm eating uh, when I see your, your meal. But player. like every time I ask Jay, what'd you eat today? I know. Right? And then and then I'm just like nothing. Like today, this is my first meal of the day. Mm -hmm. I keep not eating and I don't think that's working for me. I need to start eating more. But anyway, thank you so much for... for uh, being here with us and for everybody that is at home thank you so much for watching um this is episode number three and we're going to continue bringing in interesting people uh talking about money family side hustles etc so thank you so much for joining and nos vemos hasta mañana thank take you, care Jay. Yay. <laughs> so what you think i love it i love it i think there was very very interesting uh